Hello and welcome everyone to 2K CW. And pardon the pun, we're gonna be starting things off hot. Sorry, I'm trying. With Lucas, who we haven't seen yet in 2K CW this season. We haven't seen Lucas, I'll be honest, in quite some time. Still clocking in plenty of hours in the 2KCW training school in Syracuse. Spending a lot of time with head coach Slick Wagner Brown and assistant head coach Sean Carr. Big man ready to roll here in our opening contest. I'm still not sure how we're allowed to have pyrotechnics in such a small space, but I mean, the fire marshal hasn't shut us down yet, so I think we're safe there. Lucas will be taking on Ethan Palmer in our opening match. And of course, still to come tonight, our main event. A brand new tag team debuting here in 2KCW. Again, don't know who it is, just that the only information I've been told is that it is a team that people are familiar with within a certain community that's as vague as I can go. I don't know other than that. So we'll have to wait and find out who this team is. Both Lucas and Ethan Palmer had a quite an up and down 2021, if I'll be perfectly honest with you, a first season. So this would be a good time to get the ball rolling, get momentum going for your career. And here we go. Obviously, you can see Lucas with the size advantage. Go for an air raid neckbreaker. Me to the end of the game, going into the cover. One count. Just barely a one count for Ethan Palmer. Soccer ball kick misses, overhand rights from Palmer, trying to get some kind of offense here against the big man. Brittany Knee's coming up empty, look at that power slam from Lucas, reverse power slam. Knee lift from Palmer, running knee strike and Lucas just having an answer for everything Palmer's throwing at him. Side, reverse side, well... Russian face buster, I suppose. Side Russian face buster, not a leg sweep. Palmer working the neck of Lucas. And the jump, leaping knee lift and from Palmer. And now just grabbing him by the waist. Slam there by Lucas. This time, not even a one count. From Palmer. And an STO there by Palmer. I mean, you would think that with a size advantage that Lucas has, that he would be the one dominating, but I mean, it's not always the case. That the shorter opponents can obviously outspeed and have more cardio than their giant counterparts. Lucas now going in for the ground and pound. With a series of right hands right across the face of Palmer, and he's not letting up the referee. Giving a lot of leeway there for Lucas in that grounded pound. Normally, you'd have to go for a five count. Cover here by Lucas, kick out again by Palmer. Lucas continuing to go to work here, going for a powerbomb position. Looked like Palmer. Able to reverse, goes into the cover, looking to hope, the, hoping to disorientate the giant. It looked like, like Jack of the Beanstalk. And no, I did not just call Lucas a giant beanstalk. If that's what you're thinking, then maybe you're right. Palmer can you control the head with the legs. Low angle phase buster there. From Palmer. 
Jordan Palmer with a super kick underneath the chin of Lucas. And now Palmer throwing Lucas into the corner. We've seen this before from him. Going for the better than you. High stack cover with those legs. Cover here by Palmer. And he gets the victory over Lucas. Again, I think the speed advantage was very key to the victory here for Ethan Palmer that he outsped Lucas. Sizes and everything when it comes to a wrestling match. Now Palmer just stomping away on Lucas as we move on to our next matchup. Jenna Jordan making her way down to the ring. We last saw Jenna Jordan over on Ascend on the debut episode. Actually, in the first matchup. A debut match on the debut episode of Ascend. Unfortunately, taking the loss to Miss Maria. Jenna looking to possibly avenge that loss. Here, and she's taking on one half of the Suicide Blondes, Paige Storm. Of course, Cindy Danger, the other half of the Suicide Blondes, does own a recent victory against Akira Yamashita. It's Paige Storm's opportunity to try and get a first win here. Bell has wrong. Collar and elbow tie up. Storm getting the advantage over the veteran in the test of strength. See if we get a clean break. Page. A quick right hand to the face of Jordan. Jordan answers back with a running knee. It looks like for a scoop slam there by our body slam from Jordan. Get another collar and elbow tie up. This time, Jenna with the advantage. And super kick right to the neck. And Jordan not letting up on Paige Storm yet. And now, Paige Storm getting introduced to the turnbuckle. Turnbuckle not making great conversations like talking to a brick wall. Cindy Danger now distracting Jenna to give Paige a bit of a breather, a little bit of time to recuperate, but Jenna able to anticipate it. Running cross body misses, not Paige's cross body. Right cross missing, the overhand punch did not. Side rushing leg sweep from Paige Storm. Sound over here right from Jenna. Jenna going around the world. Head takedown. Jenna now going up to the top turnbuckle. Obviously, she has to be aware of Cindy on the outside. Bit of an awkward positioning for 
Page to be in by Jenna. Calling her up. Missile dropkick connects. Beautifully done. To Page Storm. Page rolls outside the ring. And this match goes outside. Fighting for, fighting for control and even into the barricade. Snap suplex and steel barricade not given. Not giving much of the imagination in terms of pain. And again, Cindy has to be aware of the referee. Well, the referee also has to be aware of Cindy. Make sure she does not interfere. Otherwise, this will rule in a disqualification for Jenna Jordan. Which, if Paige earns a loss against, well, due to Cindy Danger, I don't think Paige would be that happy about it. Into the corner. Looks like Jenna was maybe going for a shoulder tackle. Misses. Page now sending Jenna right into the ring post. Jenna able to get back up on her feet. Now Cindy introduces the chair similar to what she to what Paige did in Cindy's match. Jenna hits the Make a Wish DDT. That's gonna do it. Now Jenna Jordan picks up a victory over here by over Paige Storm. I don't think Paige was even aware that a chair was introduced, but she's... We saw this before with Cindy Danger, that sportsmanship on display here from the Suicide Blondes. But coming up next, folks. Barry Walker in action. Another member of the 2KCW roster who we haven't seen a lot of lately, Barry Walker. Great amateur background from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Seems like it's one of the most prominent cities in the country for amateur wrestling. Stepping into the lion's den here. When it comes to his opponent tonight. Because Barry's going to be facing off against a former heavyweight champion of two KCWs. It only leaves two options. Looking ready to go in the co-main event tonight. And of course, Barry's opponent is none other than Leroy Punchbeef, the inaugural 2KCW heavyweight champion who we haven't seen in some time. He has made some sporadic appearances for Strike Zone. Even at one point facing Kevin Owens. They're on strike zone, but we haven't seen a lot of punch beef lately. Maybe he's possibly back in the hunt to try and win back the title. I don't think he wants to do that, though, when the likes of Devin Andrews and Kendrick Gore are running amok in 2KCW.
And there we go. Walker and Punch Beef. Punch Beef obviously really with the strength advantage. Knocking down Walker. And now Barry just grab him. Well, hold him then. Knocking him straight up uppercut. To the head of Punch Beef. And again, Punch Beef just shoving away Walker. Rolling next snap from Punch Beef. Walker anticipates the leg, catches him, Dragon Screw takedown. Punch Beef answers back. Head scissor take, or a head take, footlock takedown, whatever you want to call it. Takedown nonetheless. Barry trying to answer back with some strikes against the former champion. This would raise his stock in the rankings here in 2K. So if he can knock off a former champion, cover here by Walker, not even a one count, and Punch Beef kicks out. With DDT there by Leroy Punch Beef. And that was seated. Abdominal stretch. Applied by the former champion. This would be Bray Walker's bread and butter on the mat. His grappling game is second to none. But is unable to find an answer for Punch Beef. I mean, Punch Beef is one of the most unorthodox wrestlers we've got here on the entire roster. Punch Beef sending Walker again into the turnbuckle pad. And now he's going for a high angle power bomb. I would almost say like a razor's edge into a sit out power bomb, but cover here by Punch Beef and Barry getting the kick out even before one. snap again from Punch Beef and a Punch Beef working the legs here going for the figure four on a walker submission Barry answers back quick with a straight right hand across the face of Punch Beef attack misses Punch Beef rolls out of the way Nice suplex counter there by Walker. And now Walker, what's he looking for here? Innovative maneuver, nonetheless, working, stretching the arms. Working the arms, the shoulder area, of shoulder socket of Punch Beef, cover one. was a bit of a detriment for Leroy not to be in the ring so much as of late. He's firing on all cylinders here against Barry Walker. Now focusing on the right arm. I'm going to pop the shoulder out of socket. Now punch me with a leg or excuse me an arm trapped and wrenching the opposite one. Punch Beef looking for a suplex. Walker counters again with another suplex of his own. And now Walker looking to put this match away. It looks like he's calling up for the champion to get up on his feet. Walker going for the Dude Buster. And he calls the timeout. Sitting on the shoulders. Kick out by Punch Beef. Stop right into the tricep. The left arm of Punch Beef Walker. Series of double close axe handles. Rolling kick into the corner. 
Walker with a running elbow or an uppercut into the diving uppercut right to the back from the middle rope cover here by Walker the pin the former champion punch beef kicks out Walker and looking to go for another big maneuver here this time punch beef obviously saw the timeout dumps him over the top rope out on the floor now just the disrespect shown by punch beef just punch beef's not thinking that Walker is much of a threat to him no respect like he's a piece of garbage You don't want to say that he was treating Walker like he's a pile of table scraps. Or whatever trimmings are left on the cutting room floor. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying again. Walker takes on the referee inadvertently, but he takes down Walker at the same time. Now Punch Beef is trying to gather his bearings. The referee is still laid out here. Now Punch Beef again. Power bomb. High angle stack. Referee just coming to. And Barry gets the kick out of that power bomb. Very tight cover by Punch Beef. Punch Beef, he can go up to the top rope, go for that frog splash that he calls the slap chop. I was expecting him to go for that then. And Barry with the seven star DDT. Into the cover now on Punch Beef. Kick out by Punch Beef. I think I would honestly believe that I am the only commentator in the world of professional wrestling that has to call a wrestler by his last name of Punch Beef. A strange world that we live in, folks. Barry working the arm. Again, a Punch Beef. Leroy able to break free from the, looks like a standing Americana. Which starts from Walker, vertical suplex. Second and Leroy going for a third here. On to Walker. And Leroy just staring a hole into Walker. Trying to figure out his next plan of attack. He's going for a looks like a standing clover leaf of sorts. Driving the knee into the lower shoulders of Walker with the submission. Barry not tapping out, but maybe that was enough to put him out. Leroy shoots the half into the cover. And if he's not going to tap, he might as well nap. Leroy punch beef picks up a win over Barry Walker here. I think that was probably the most grappling I've seen out of Punch Beef. Maybe that was something that he picked up in his time off. And Walker earning the respect of Punch Beef, the inaugural champion. Ladies and gentlemen, come up next our main event. We have our main event. The C batteries in action. They have lost a match. Again, on the debut episode of Ascend, they lost a match to the Red River Connection. It was a great win for Red River Connection because they've had quite a down 2021. But the batteries, they were at one point undefeated here in. 2KCW, they had a hell of a 
winning streak. I mean, they even got to the point of earning themselves a tag team opportunity. But a 2KCW event. As they went through the entire roster. But they came up short when it came to facing the champions at the time. Well, the only other two tag team champions we've had here. The Awakening. It won't be long now to find out who this mystery team is. That's... No way, that's... Oh, <laughs> when I said certain community would know who these guys are, this gentlemen, this is Gore and Perkins. One of the most entertaining and recognizable tag teams in wrestling games. Gore and Perkins all the way from the UK. Gore and Perkins are here in 2KCW. Here we go. Gore starting things off here against Cameron Neo. Overhead suplex there by Neo. What a moment for the C batteries that they got to take on Gore and Perkins. Into the gut wrench power bomb there by Cameron Neo. Cameron going to work on Gore. And another gut wrench power bomb. Gore able to answer back with a jawbreaker. Sends him into his opposite corner tag mate. Here comes Mighty Perkins. What are they looking for here? Obviously one of the greatest tag teams in 3D. A 3D there but from Gore and Perkins. Jawbreaker from Neo to Perkins. Our flying forearm connects. Gore, excuse me, Perkins able to counter elevated drop kick. From Mighty Perkins. Off the ropes. Slam there by Neo. Perkins in the wrong part of town. Another flying forearm right into the face of Neo. Neo's on fire right now here against Mighty Perkins. Neo, what's he looking for here? Sit out, power bomb. And Perkins is immediately back up on his feet. Outside the ring we go. This is a Gore and Perkins. Or here. Just being dumped right on the ring apron from Perkins. And Neo's been in this matchup since the beginning. He needs to, at this point, needs to make a tag out to his partner, Christian. Curtis Christian. Perkins back inside. The count of seven. I mean, I guess in their debut, I don't know if they would really want to take a count out victory. Perkins goes back outside, resets the count. Neo firing back here on Perkins. A little kick to the gut there from Perkins. Or two Perkins. And these two are just continuing to fight outside. They don't seem to have much interest in bringing it back in. 
Neo sending Perkins inside the ring. Well, dealing with more damage to the head. To Perkins. And now Neo. Brain Buster. And again, Perkins is looking to take Neo outside the ring, but he's able to counter that. But it's still very interesting that Neo has not tagged in Curtis, and maybe Cameron's kind of taking this in, like taking this to himself. Neo space, kind of going to business for himself here because he's, I think he's more or less viewed as the weaker link of the C batteries. Now the battery's ganging up on Gore. And Christian snap suplex to Gore, who's forced to roll outside, and Curtis going back out on the apron. Meanwhile, in the ring, Perkins sending him back to Gore, but Gore nowhere to be found. So Perkins is still in the ring with Cameron Neo here. Perkins is the cover. Not even a one count, and Cameron kicks out. To the corner again. Perkins. Looking for here something. Not quite sure. But Perkins sent into the C batteries corner. Tag. Here comes Curtis. A double axing of the little arm of Perkins. Back elbow. Although. And Perkins needs to make a tag here to gore if he can I, was about to say, I think I just manifested that whole interaction but not yet <laughs> Christian series of right hands to the abdomen of Perkins coming up with Taya Perkins getting the advantage Perkins looking for an inverted DDT there so Curtis Christian and Perkins just kind of showing the wounds of battle here. Just the exhaustion starting to set into Perkins. I, mean, I don't know how long that these guys, their matches tend genuinely go for, but the exhaustion looks like it's starting to set in. That maneuver, Perkins to the cover. And this time it's Gore that's sending Neo to the floor, and Gore back up on the apron. Now Gore series of clotheslines. Ducks in an eight super kick. Slack takedown from Christian. Trying to get the crowd behind him here. Now Christian flying in. Series of forearm or a forearm into the atomic drop. Into the slam. Now Perkins trying to get to Gore. Christian able to cut him off the pass. A knee right to the gut, gut buster. And possibly even to the face because I believe that Perkins is busted open here against Christian up on his shoulders. Elevated DDT from Perkins. And Christian's right there, not able to make the tag to Neo. Into the takedown there by Perkins, another knee drop. Got kick, rolling, something, or running maneuver blocked by Perkins. Off 
the ropes. Duck under. Looking for here. Pardon. Another clothesline from Perkins. Rolling into the cover to win this matchup in their debut. Cameron breaks it up. Gorge was trying to fend off Cameron. Perkins is not, I don't know where he thinks he is. I mean, I know obviously the measurements are a little different between the, the UK and the American, uh, the Americas, but he's not used to this size of a ring. I don't know. And again, dumped out the outside the ring. Curtis. Then for some kind of maneuver, diving, axe handle, elbow, standing elbow drop to Perkins. And Perkins going face first into the apron and a rising knee. And Perkins makes the tag. Here comes Gore. I don't think even Christian even saw it coming. And he does now. And Gork teeing off here on Chris Christian. Flying forearm connects again, this time to the back of the neck. And a running high knee strike from Gore into the cover on Christian. Kick out by Curtis Christian. Kick to the bag, nothing fancy there. Into the turnbuckle. Gore goes shoulder first into the turnbuckle. Now, Christian with the plummet. That elevated DDT and Gore is back up on his feet off the plummet. And a running spear there from Gore. Wasn't quite a gore. He got a roll through on it. So that was more of a spear than a gore. Rolls into the cover. Off the spear. Enough. Cameron breaks it up yet again. What a matchup this main event is. The C batteries versus Gore and Perkins. Who would have thought? Atomic drop into the leg drop into another drop kick from Gore Gore slit the throat V trigger a move more famously known as the V trigger from Kenny Omega by Gore Gore's not sure what to make of Curtis Christian here it looks like Gonna go for a tag maneuver with Perkins. Opposite turnbuckle we go. Kick. And by Gore, round and around we go. Tag man, here comes Perkins. And looking for it again. The move that opened the matchup. 3D. And a 3D from Gore and Perkins. Christian takes down Perkins. Kick blocked. Perkins counters. Into the turnbuckle ago. Again we go. What is Perkins looking for here? Not entirely sure. Perkins springboard super kick. Look at that was a thing of beauty. Now Christian wearing the wounds of battle here against Go Mighty Perkins. Oh, that springboard super kick. And this time another plummet to Perkins. Christian rolls into the cover on Perkins. This is going to be enough. And the sea batteries have defeated Goran Perkins. 
in their debut. I don't think that's going to hurt Goran Perkins in the slightest in terms of their fame. What a victory for the Sea Batteries. Folks, that's going to wrap it up for our show this week. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And we'll see you right here next week on 2KCW.